Evet e, merhaba arkadaşlar batıyorum hoş geldiniz bugün e, size yine e, özel bir konukla merhaba diyoruz e, Sırbistanlı gazeteci arkadaşımız Neboysa Markoviç ile Kızıl Yıldız'ı e, tüm detaylarıyla konuşmaya çalışacağız biliyorsunuz hem Kızıl Yıldız hem de Trabzonspor gruba mağlubiyetle başladılar ve Kızıl Yıldız e, Trabzonspor maçı Perşembe günü Trabzon'da oynanacak maçla ilgili öncesinde Kızıl Yıldız tarafından son bilgileri Neboysa'dan alacağız. Batıyorum desteklerinizle büyüyor. Lütfen abone olmayı unutmayın. Tüm Trabzonsporlu taraftarlardan e, isteğimiz kanalımıza abone olmanız ve bu videoyu beğenmeniz. Ayrıca video hakkındaki görüşlerinizi mutlaka yorumlara e, belirtin. Şimdi e, videoya geçiyoruz. E, ne boysa hi. Thanks for your participation. E, welcome to our YouTube channel. Hello and no problem. Thank you. We want to talk about Red Star Belgrade. Yes, we know Red Star because uh, they have a huge history and they uh, have a, a very European competitions. They played in every year, I think, in the European competitions. Uh, and we want to talk about Red Star with a journalist who can give uh, us such good information about the team. And as you know, you are a Serbian journalist. And I want to uh, start with my first question. Uh, as you know, Red Star is with Trabzonspor, Ferencvaros and Monaco. Firstly, I want to know that uh, what are the thoughts of uh, Red Star Belgrade sides on this draw? Because as you know, there were uh, better sides, I think. And uh, what about the, they are they are thinking about the group? Well, at Red Star, I think they were not as happy with the group as the one they maybe could have gotten because they were in pot one. And when and when you're in such a privileged position, and that's something that Red Star couldn't even dream about like five years ago. So when you're in such a position, you maybe expect a bit of an easier group last season. Red Star was top of their group when they were not from coming from pot one. So they maybe wanted to get the teams that would, uh, you know, uh, give them a great chance of uh, finishing in top two places and, and to continue Europa League uh, into the next year. Uh, so this group was a tough one because uh, we, we know how, uh, how uh, good of a team uh, Monaco is. Uh, Trabzonspor is a Turkish champion and, and then it's the same with, with Ferenc Farosh in Hungary. Uh, so uh, it, all, all of these teams actually played in, in in the Champions League qualifiers. So it's a it, it's not an easy group to get, and um, uh, the mood at Red Star maybe changed after losing to Maccabi Haifa in the in the playoff for the Champions League, because they they really expected to to get through and to you know finally return to Champions League. Um, so with uh, with the mood worsening around the club because of that, and uh, with getting some um, tough opposition, um, the people around the club were maybe not as happy about the group, but uh, they still believe they can they can go through. I, and you mean I think uh, the real, realistic target for Red Star is uh, being in the top two, I think. Well, yes, when you're from pot one, you definitely want to get out of the group and, you know, uh, to continue, especially with uh, with the way Red Star played in the last couple of seasons and, you know, reaching those um, stages of the of the Europa League in both of the last two seasons. So um, that's definitely something that, that is the goal. And I think that they can get out of this group. It's just that it is uh, a bit tricky and unpredictable because between all these sides, um, there can be um, a lot of um, interesting matchups and, you know, maybe maybe some teams will lose points when you wouldn't expect them to or something like that. So um, it, there there is no clear team that will maybe win 15, 18 points. Maybe maybe Monaco can do it now after they beat Red Star, but you, you believe that they're not so amazing and that maybe you can actually uh, get something off them. Nice. Uh, we know some players from Turkey. Milan Borjan, the goalkeeper, and Alexander Pesic uh, was very good at the Karagümrük la last year. So, uh, can you name the uh, best players of the Red Star? Uh, well, uh, Red Star is uh, one of their best players in the last uh, few seasons has been Alexander Katay, who, who plays as an attacking midfielder. 
this season has not started ideally for him. Um, there were some uh, uh, recent um, uh, whistles uh, from the fans towards him and some other players uh, um, after the game uh, after, uh, against Monaco. Uh, so uh, he, he's not in his best uh, shape uh, so far this season, but he's a uh, He's a dangerous player who, you know, he's a very technical and uh, he's maybe not uh, physically imposing. He's not running as much as some other guys, but um, he does things on the pitch that can change uh, the course of the game. Uh, also, we can mention Osman Bukhari. He's uh, Red Stars, uh, one of their biggest ever arrivals in the club in terms of the of the money spent. They they signed him from from Belgium and. Uh, he was really good in some of the early uh, European games, and he's a very um, pacey player who who can really run in behind and who can you know hurt teams. Um, so they they were um, the two players that actually played uh, behind Pesic against uh, against Monaco, and uh, of course we we have to mention Pesic, who is uh, an interesting uh, signing for Red Star because they they lost. Uh, uh, several strikers this summer, and he's a he's a domestic player, but he has that uh, international experience, and uh, he's also the kind of player maybe that uh, uh, Red Star like uh, in these recent seasons that he's able to score goals, but he can do other things as well. He can open the uh, open space for uh, for uh, attacking midfielders and wingers coming in, and is. Uh, interesting player from that point of view, but um, we, we'll see how he could do uh, against Trabzon because um, he, he was doing well in Turkey. Maybe maybe he continues that. Yes, I think. Uh, also, as you know, the Dejan Stankovic part the ways with the Red Star Belgrade after the loss against Maccabi Haifa. Uh, and I think it's a shocky result for Red Star. Uh, and, and also in the in the first match of the group, uh, Red Star lost to Monaco. Uh, I want to uh, ask about the Red Star's start to this season, league and also European competitions. Uh, well, in, in the league, things are going pretty good for them. They, you could say that they just uh, made one poor result, and that was their last game when, when they drew at home. And we, which they didn't expect. They also drew against Partizan in the big Dalgary derby. But as derbies go, you, you can always have either results. So a point is is not ideal, but it's not terrible. Um, but before that, they had six wins. They, they scored, I think, 27 goals in eight matches in the league. So they, they're they not having too many problems. And um, they also didn't play two games in the league this season because of the European competitions they, they were postponed. Um, but uh, when you look at their recent run, they have only one win in the last six matches because they uh, they lost in Israel to Maccabi and then drew at home. Um, they then they lost uh, Dan Stankovic, who who was obviously exhausted from from this job, and he had his third chance to to bring the team to the Champions League. He didn't do it, he couldn't do it, and then um, he decided to go. Uh, Milos Milovic arrived as his arrival, he, uh, as his uh, successor. Um, he was his uh, assistant manager, uh, assistant coach at one point, and, uh, and he, he knows Red Star, but this is a, a new new kind of job for him. Um, he, he, it, it's just a huge club that um, he took over, and. Um, the expectations are always uh, uh, at the very highest, and uh, it will not be an easy task for him. But uh, Milovic has uh, uh, hasn't even, you know, started ideally with those two draws in the league and now the loss against uh, against Monaco. So it, it, it's not ideal. Um, the mood around the team is not ideal. Also, uh, uh, what we can say about his uh, team is that. Um, he hasn't led them in many matches so far, but it, it, it was as expected in the league. They play with uh, with four at the back, <clears throat> more kind of a 4-2-3-1 formation, while against Monaco, they played in a 3-4-2-1 system where um, you can put a little bit more defensive cover. And they were doing okay for the most part of the match. Uh, they were not thrilling. It was not some amazing football, but 
you know, against the top opposition against such as Monaco, they, they were doing uh, fine um, until they they conceded that only goal and then ultimately lost the match. So it will be interesting to see how uh, Milojevic will respond and uh, what kind of team he could choose um, for, for, for this match. And uh, we might see again uh, a system with three centre-backs. And lastly, as you know, Red Star, the first pot team lost to Monaco and Trabzonspor lost to French Varoche, surprisingly, with a 10 men. Nearly they played 75 minutes with 10 men, but uh, we lost the game. Uh, what are your uh, realistic uh, expectations about the match? Uh, I think it's a draw game for me. Uh, well, well it, it feels like that, especially when you go to Turkey. Um, it's it's not it's not easy to play in Turkey. We all know we know how how the fans can be in, in for many different Turkish clubs, and it's always a hot atmosphere. And it's um, as in Belgrade. I think yeah, well, it's hotter, hotter in Belgrade. Not always, yes. Most of the time, yes. Um, but um, the thing is that Turkish teams are um, used to that kind of atmosphere, so it's not um, a surprise for them. But you know that can maybe be a surprise against teams in from Western Europe where they're not used to it. But but when you have teams like this from Serbia and Turkey, they they know that kind of atmosphere. It's it's not uh, anything new, but it's still. I'm not pleasant to go and and and play in Turkey. So um, maybe from the outset it feels like a, a draw game, but uh, considering that both teams lost their first match, they will really be going for for the win. Yeah. Um, it, it it can be um, uh, for Red Star. This may this match could be a catalyst because if you go uh, to Turkey and beat their champion away, and uh, after that putting loss. You, can, you will kind of forget about the Monaco game and you will start over, you will have three points, you will be in a much better and stronger uh, position. Um, so um, it's um, it's a very tough one to predict, especially considering that um, Trabzon uh, lost to Ferenc Varos. So maybe that will also be something that will um, help the mindset of, of the Red Star players that if you know they could lose against Ferenc Varos with 10 men that you know maybe we can do something too i understand and thanks for your participation uh, thanks for having me uh, we can make this before the second game uh, yeah. maybe we can get the latest uh, situation and information about the red star uh, at the second game thanks again for your participation evet arkadaşlar ne boysayı konuk ettik ve Kızıl Yıldız'ı e, konuşmaya çalıştık. Güzel bir video oldu bence. Yine faydalı bir video oldu. Umarım Trabzonspor artık bu sefer Avrupa'da galibiyetini e, getirir. E, hem kendisine teşekkür ediyoruz hem de sizden kanala abone olmanızı, bu videoyu beğenmenizi bekliyoruz. Bu video hakkındaki yorumlarınızı mutlaka aşağı bırakın. Sizce maçı kim kazanır? Trabzonspor ilk galibiyetini alabilir mi? Yorumlarınızı bekliyoruz. İzlediğiniz için çok teşekkürler. Kendinize iyi bakın. Görüşmek üzere.